Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnson. Welcome to lecture 42 of Introductory Linear Algebra. In today's class, we're going to explore something called the Fibonacci sequence, which is a sequence of integers. Okay, and this maybe seems a little bit strange as a topic for this course, but the really neat thing is that you can explore this sequence and learn lots of things about it via linear algebra, and in particular, via diagonalization. Okay, so what is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, it's a sequence of integers, and you might have heard of it before. It's the sequence where, you know, it starts off 1, 1, and then every term is the sum of the previous two terms in the sequence. So, for example, the next term in the sequence is 2, because, well, 1 plus 1 is 2. Then the next term in the sequence is 3, because 1 plus 2 is 3. And then 5, because 2 plus 3 is 5. And then 3 plus 5 is 8, and 5 plus 8 is 13, and so on, okay? You just keep on adding up two terms at a time to get yourself the next term. Okay, a little bit more properly, you know, let's give a notation for this. Let's say the first Fibonacci, f sub 1, is 1, and then the second Fibonacci number, f sub 2, is 1. And then after that, you know, the n plus 1th Fibonacci number, it's just the sum of the nth and the n minus 1th Fibonacci number, okay? So that's how you get, you know, all the Fibonacci numbers after the second, uh, you know, for, as the sum of the previous two. Okay, well, how can we turn this into a linear algebra problem? Well, what we've got to do is we've got to kind of encode this recurrence relation here. This is called a recurrence relation, where one value of a sequence depends on previous values. We've got to encode that in a matrix somehow, and I'm going to show you how we do it. Okay, in particular, notice that you can represent this recurrence relation via this matrix multiplication, okay? What this is saying, let's focus on the top entries, right? Over, over on the left, we've got a two by one vector. Over on the right, after you do the matrix multiplication, you're also gonna have a two by one vector. And what is the top entry of that two by one vector that you get when you do the matrix multiplication? Well, it's gonna be one, one, dotted with fn, fn minus one. So you're gonna get fn plus fn minus one over on the right-hand side at the top there. So if you compare the top entries, you're gonna get fn plus one equals fn plus fn minus 1, which is exactly the defining equation of the Fibonacci sequence. That's exactly what we said the Fibonacci sequence satisfies. Okay, the bottom entry is just there to sort of pad it out to be a full square matrix. Okay, the bottom entry, we've got fn on the bottom over here, and over on the right-hand side, we're going to get one zero dotted with that. We're just going to get fn on the bottom on the right-hand side too. So the bottom's just true. It says fn equals fn, which, yeah, it does. It's just we wanted that bottom row so that we're dealing with a square matrix so that we can do diagonalization and things like that to it. All right. So this matrix, it sort of transitions us from one Fibonacci number to the next Fibonacci number, right? Multiplying by this matrix sort of steps up in the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, well, what if we take powers of this matrix, right? What if we iterate this line of thinking? Okay, well, like, so if we just use this matrix once, we get exactly what we wrote up here. So this is just copying and pasting. Okay, but then if we use that matrix again, we can decrease the subscripts farther. Okay, so if we square that matrix, it's going to turn fn, fn minus 1 over here to fn minus 1, fn minus 2. Okay, and then we could, you know, use the cube of this matrix. If we throw another copy of that matrix in there, it's going to decrease that subscript again. And if you just keep going and going and going, eventually you get down to f sub 1 and f sub 2 over on the right-hand side here in this vector, which, remember, the first two Fibonacci numbers, they're just 1s. So it's just the vector 1 and 1 over there. Okay, and when that happens is when you're at the n minus 1th power of this matrix, when you've used this matrix to decrease the subscript n minus 1 times. Okay, so if we could compute an explicit formula for powers of this matrix, then what we would get as a byproduct of that is an explicit formula for these Fibonacci numbers. Okay, so it gives us sort of a way of turning this recurrence relation, this formula where, you know, each Fibonacci number depends on the previous ones, into an explicit formula where you just plug in n, where it's just, hey, the nth Fibonacci number is plug n into this. And you don't need to compute all of the Fibonacci numbers before it first. All right, so let's go through this calculation. Let's diagonalize this matrix and then compute arbitrary powers of it via that diagonalization. All right, well, how do we do diagonalization? You need eigen stuff, right? So get your eigenvalues, get your eigenvectors. We already did the eigenvalues of this matrix in the previous video, okay? We saw that the eigenvalues of this matrix were one plus or minus root five over two. 
Okay, we're going to need the eigenvectors as well, but the calculation is going to be slightly messy. So just to sort of consolidate notation and make things a little bit easier to write down, I'm going to give a name to the largest of these two eigenvalues. I'm going to call it phi. Okay, if you've ever heard of the golden ratio or anything like that, that is this number. This, this is the golden ratio. I'm going to call it phi. So phi is just this particular number here, which is like 1.61 something, something, something. All right. And the other root, the other eigenvalue, 1 minus root 5 over 2, well, it turns out that's just 1 minus phi, okay? If you do 1 minus this expression, you get 1 minus root 5 over 2, okay? So the two eigenvalues of this matrix, using this notation on the right, are phi and 1 minus phi. All right, let's find the eigenvectors now, okay? So remember, for eigenvectors, well, you work one eigenvalue at a time. So let's start with the eigenvalue phi and find corresponding eigenvectors to that. Okay, so subtract phi off of the diagonal, right? Subtract your eigenvalue off the diagonal, augment with zeros, and solve that linear system. Okay, so to make my life a little bit easier, I'm gonna swap these two rows so that my leading entry in the top row in that top left corner is just a one. I like my leading entries being one. It makes the arithmetic a little bit easier to do. Okay, and then the next row operation I'm gonna do is just to zero this entry in the bottom left corner. Okay, so I'm gonna to wanna to do row two minus 1 minus phi times row 1, okay? So I did this row operation to get a 0 down here. And when I do that, I also happen to get a 0 down here, okay? And, I mean, on one hand, of course I get a 0 down there. When you're doing eigenvector calculations, you always need at least one free variable, okay? So, of course, I've got to get a 0 there. I can't have a leading entry, otherwise I wouldn't be able to find an eigenvector, okay? But a way to really see that, yeah, you do get 0 down there is you, you do this calculation. What are you going to get? You're going to get 1 minus 1 minus phi times minus phi. Okay, so I know that's a bit, bit of a mouthful, but let's do a little side calculation here. This entry down here, it's 1 minus 1 minus phi times minus phi. You expand that out, you get minus phi squared plus phi plus 1. And if you go back up to our calculation where we computed phi, like where, where we found that, yeah, that's an eigenvalue of this matrix, well, where that came from is it's a root of this polynomial. We did the quadratic equation to this polynomial. And that's just the negative of the thing we just wrote down. Okay, so if you plug phi into this polynomial, you get zero. It's a root of it, right? That's where it came from, All right? So that's why this entry down here, that's why it equals zero because, well, that's exactly, you know, just the negative of the characteristic polynomial of that matrix. All right, so now let's find our eigenvectors from this, okay? V1, my first entry is leading. V2, my second entry is free. Okay, so write your leading variables in terms of your free variables, okay? So this equation here, this means v1 minus phi times v2 equals zero. Rearrange that, so it's v1 equals phi v2. So my eigenvector is, well, v1 is the first entry, so phi v2 is the first entry, and v2 itself is just v2. v2 is already free. Okay, factor out v2, and I find that all my eigenvectors are of this form here, free variable times the vector phi1. Great. So that tells me a basis of my eigenspace is just this vector here, right? Everything in that eigenspace is just a multiple of that guy. So it's a basis of my eigenspace. My eigenspace is one dimensional. All right. So that's for lambda equals phi, one of my eigenvalues. We also have to do the same thing for lambda equals one minus phi, my other eigenvalue. We spent enough time finding eigenvectors in this video. You can try this on your own. You're going to find the basis of the eigenspace is just one minus phi one. Okay, so try that eigenvector calculation on your own. You just subtract 1 minus phi from the diagonal and do the same calculation we just went through. All right, so this tells us the diagonalization of this matrix. Okay, it tells us how to diagonalize it, right? What you do is you construct a diagonal matrix where the diagonal entries are the eigenvalues in whatever order you like. So I'm just going to do phi first and then 1 minus phi next. Okay, it doesn't matter the order. Pick some order. It doesn't matter. Okay, but then when you construct P, make sure you put the corresponding eigenvectors in, in the same order. Okay, so here I put phi first in D, so put the eigenvector corresponding to phi as the first column of P. So this phi one, that was our corresponding eigenvector. Okay, and then the next column is going to be the eigenvector corresponding to one minus phi. Okay, and that's that there. And then the last piece you need is you need P inverse. Okay, so I'm just going to use our explicit formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix, right? You do 1 divided by the determinants over here, and then you sort of scramble up the entries, right? Swap the diagonal entries, stick negative signs in front of the off diagonal entries, and this is what you get. And now I'm just going to simplify that a little bit. This phi minus 1 minus phi, careful of your double negative on the phi there, okay? 
If you work that out and simplify it, it just works out to one over root five. Okay, so this is what you get as P inverse. And now we've got our diagonalization. We know these three matrices in the diagonalization. Now that we know the diagonalization, we can compute arbitrary powers of that matrix. And again, remember the way you do this is you just do P times that power of D times P inverse. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, let's stitch all of this together. Remember what we want here. We wanted, you know, to compute arbitrary Fibonacci numbers. Well, the way we did that was power of the matrix times one, one. Let's throw everything in here. Okay, so I'm just replacing that matrix A to the power of n minus one by P D to the power of n minus one P inverse. That's how we compute powers via diagonalization. Okay, and now actually throw in those matrices P D and P inverse that we computed. Okay, so over here, that's P. This is D to the n minus one. And remember, because D is diagonal, you can just throw those powers on the diagonal entries. Okay, and then this is P inverse, except P inverse had a one over root five out in front of it. I've just pulled that all the way out in front. Okay, you can pull scalars all the way out in front. And then we still have this vector one, one on the right hand side here. So now all I've got to do is I just got to multiply all that junk together. Okay, and I'll get my answer. Okay, so let's start on the right. Let's maybe start with the rightmost multiplication and do that every single time. All right, so let's do matrix times vector over here on the right, leave everything else alone. So this junk over here, that's just all copied and pasted from the previous line. I didn't do anything with these first two matrices. Then this vector here though, that's the matrix times vector on the rightmost side. Okay, and just keep doing that. Okay, next I'm gonna do this matrix vector multiplication while I leave the leftmost matrix alone. Okay, and what do I get then? Well, I just get this guy here. Okay, so the leftmost matrix didn't do anything with it. Matrix times vector was this. Okay, it's phi to the n in the top entry minus one minus phi n uh, in the bottom entry. Okay, and now I finally do the last matrix vector multiplication and I get this kind of ugly looking vector here. Okay, so this is vector now. Be careful, it's not a matrix anymore, right? This is a matrix times a vector. I get a vector. The top entry is this difference of two terms. Bottom entry is this difference of two terms. All right, so that tells me an explicit formula for the Fibonacci sequence, right? All I've got to do now is compare entries on the left and on the right. What is F sub N? What is the nth Fibonacci number? Well, it's the bottom entry of the vector on the left. So it's got to be the bottom entry of the vector on the right as well. Okay, so this tells us that an explicit formula for the nth Fibonacci number, well, it's just F sub N equals this entry, and we still have the divided by root five out in front as well, okay? So one divided by root five times phi to the power n minus one minus phi to the power n. Okay, so you have this explicit way of computing arbitrary Fibonacci numbers without having to compute previous Fibonacci numbers in the sequence, okay? And it's based on these two special numbers here, like this number phi, that's, you know, remember that's one plus root five divided by two, which is roughly 1.618. And then this number here, this is one minus root five over two, okay? And that's roughly 0 0.618, yada, yada, yada. Alrighty, so that'll do it for that. Um, next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at some more exotic things that you can do uh, with diagonalization. We're gonna start looking at things like, how do you take non-integer powers of a matrix? You diagonalize it. So I'll see you then for that.